I've put the uh, front uh, on this, so now we have a totally enclosed box. All diffused illumination uh, setups should typically use a enclosed box, so I've done that here. Um, basically, we have the same setup. This is DSi, and you can see here, um, perfect blobs. So I've calibrated it so it's only as soon as you touch the surface. So once again, this is 7512 on top with end light and below. The end light, the environmental lights, eight millimeter ribbon going all the way around, all four sides. And you can see it's only producing blobs until you just barely touch the surface. And I've made the blobs really big as you can see. You can make it even more accurate so that it doesn't do it. I mean, you can, I'm barely touching, but you can see you still get a blob if you have a slight hover effect. All diffuse surface tables will have this effect. This setup is by far my favorite um, because it's so turnkey. There's no silicon pouring from the uh, FTR system. There's no uneven illumination in this setup. Basically, you've got perfect turnkey 512, so you got the 512 on top, Enlighten, LEDs, ready to go. Easiest system to do. And it's what I make all my setups out of is DSi. You can do fiducial tracking on this, finger tracking, object tracking, anything you want. Uh, you do have to have an enclosed box though, so large walls is typically out of the question for it. Um, also, you are limited by the length that the LEDs will go through the end light, and um, it's typically about 17 inches from each side. So you can't have something that's more than about three feet or about a meter, or about a third of a meter, um, or sorry, <laughs> about a meter uh, wide here. So about three feet is the maximum on the shortest side. You can go forever lengthwise because you have the LEDs going across both sides, but as you can see, really, really good blobs. Okay, so if you want to build an LED LP table, uh, a couple advantages are uh, it's just like LLP except it uses LEDs, so it's not too difficult to do. Uh, it does require an LED frame of LEDs going shooting their light just over the surface of the table. Uh, some of the best LEDs to use are the Osram's SFH 4550s, which are an 850 nanometer LED. And their beam angle is really, really tiny. It's six degrees. So they technically are called laser LEDs um, because it's so narrow. And that makes it perfect for making a plane of light going over the surface. So you can imagine these LEDs are shooting a plane right over the surface. There's, I put one row on this side and one row at the top there. You want to do at least two sides. Uh, four sides are better, obviously. The more light, the better. It's creating technically a grid, um, and I've spaced these LEDs so that the, the beams themselves are intersecting exactly where my image starts. You don't have to do that, um, but because I'm only having two sides here, I, I want to make sure I'm getting definitely enough light. Um, they're all wired uh, 12 volts in groups of 8. 8 times 1.5 is 12, so no resistors needed. Um, groups of 8 going down, and I'm powering it all with a power supply from a computer modified. So, quite a few LEDs. Um, I think there's about 80 or so of them going around, 10 groups of 8 or so. Um, so, this is what the output from CCV looks like. You can see how narrow the LEDs are. They're just beams of light going across. And the blobs are perfect. Um, thanks again also to the 7512 rear projection material we're using here on top. Um, creates blobs only when you touch the surface. Uh, a lot of the magic in these tables is really on what rear projection material you choose, with this material being the best. Um, so you do get a slight hover, as you can see. I can turn the amplify down that I have up. Uh, here I can turn it down, but I want to make sure I get perfect blobs um, Really nice Contrasty thing so you can see uh, Trying to do a thing here so You can see it's got a slight hover, but Really really good blobs all over the table. So no problem there One of the things just like an LOP that you do have to worry about is oculation which is basically blocking uh, a finger with 
uh, another finger. Uh, here you don't have that problem because I have it in an L shape, but if you had the uh, you know, bar, LEDs on one side and LEDs on another, if you technically had three fingers here, this middle finger would be hidden. So you want to make sure you do at least an L pattern or you have all four sides uh, covered or, you know, at least two next to each other or more. Um, so yeah, that's ASIC LLP. The problem with this one is you do typically have to put a bezel of sorts over it, uh, mostly for looks, um, but most people try and make these things with the 15 or 30 uh, degree LEDs from China because they're super cheap um, but they're also really terrible because you know they're compared to six degrees it's a huge beam angle it's like five times greater um, so you have to put a bezel over here so that the light because the light's emitted for, uh, out of a cone out of the LEDs so it hits that bezel and bounces back and does this thing going across um, as best it can but if you get these LEDs which are really nice it basically just shoot straight across and you don't have to worry about a bezel and the bezel is more for a aesthetic look uh, going over it. If you want to build a rear diffused illumination surface, it uses diffused light to permeate through the touch surface. You don't have to have a compliant layer like the FTIR, and you can use a piece of glass or acrylic as the very top surface, which a lot of people use for applications like in the bar system, or used for nightclubs. Uh, Microsoft Surface uses the same kind of thing. They use a rear DI system with a top layer of acrylic. Okay, so looking inside a typical rear DI box, you have your infrared illuminators. Here we're using a four bar kit from Environmental Lights. They have a really nice setup here. It uses a strip of high brightness LEDs. And you can see that they're on right now, which is why you have that pink glow. They're the 850 nanometer wavelength. They have 120 degree viewing uh, beam angle, so they really fill up the box with light, uh, much better than those uh, security CCTV lamps that a lot of people use, which have a very narrow 15 to 30 degree uh, beam angle. Sure, they can you know light up a subject really far away, but we're only working with typically a few feet when you're building a rear DI box, so you want to have something with a really really wide beam angle and really high bright intensity, so that your light comes out of the, you know, fills the box area and comes out right exactly where your fingers are so it reflects the light back down to the camera. A uh, four bar kit consists of, and they also have two bar kits, but a four bar, a typical kit will consist of bars, connector wires going in between. They've also added this new thing, which is a dimmer. It's touch, so you turn on, turn off, and then you can also dim or not dim fainter and brighter so you can make them less bright if you need to more bright just depends on what your setup is okay for the rear DI setup it has the four bar kit installed on every edge here I've dropped some clear acrylic and then the rear projection 7512 on top LEDs are on, and also, once again, perfect blobs. Now, the blobs are really good due to the rear projection material again. And you can see it's only as soon as you just touch the surface that you're getting really good blobs. Another option for the rear DI instead of the 4 bar LED kit, if you are having problems with larger setups, which is often the problem of getting uh, not enough light in the corners because you place the bars in the center of each of the sides, so a lot of the problems you'll have is you'll get really good tracking like in the center and stuff, but when you go to the corners, you won't get good tracking at all. Uh, to make sure you don't get that, you can get the LED modules from Environmental Lights, which is basically a three uh, module is three LEDs of the highest brightness LED ribbon that they currently sell. It's 850 nanometer and 120 degree beam angle LEDs. Uh, you would typically want to use the 3M tape that you can see here, and you'd want to stick it to the uh, you know your inside of your box and attach them all the way along. You can get them in kits of 25, 50. Etc., and you can cut them anywhere you want. 
run them off of a standard, you know, 60 watt, which is what the kits come with, or you can run as many as you want. Um, I just have them strewn around the inside of the box here, um, and then you would want to take the uh, enclosed box because you would want to enclose the box because it's a rear DI setup. Uh, but for just demo purposes here, uh, we can get pretty good results um, without the box closed. You'll get even more brighter blobs uh, with the box closed because the light will bounce around inside and only come out the top instead of coming out the large side over here. But as you can see, pretty similar results to the rear DI that we just saw using the LED bars. But this is a great way to make sure you don't get any, uh, you know, loss of infrared light at the corners because you can strew it anywhere you want. You can even double it back or do whatever configuration you want.